Hi, this is Marty with Skincare Science, and welcome back for another video. All right, in this video, uh, I had a request to talk about a few products, uh, and uh, I'll go ahead and list the products and talk about them as, as I list them. Uh, basically, uh, the first one, and it's always a big one, it always is, it's uh, AHA 15 uh, Refining Gel. Okay, so basically, uh, AHA 15 Refining Gel uh, is um, 15% uh, glycolic acid at 3.3 to 3.6 pH. It's a very strong. And the question was, can I use it three times a week? Uh, the answer would be, well, it depends on the Fitzpatrick scale. But right off the bat, I would not. Okay. And also, too, when the question was asked, well, what cleanser are they using in the AM and in the PM? Is there glycolic acid? in the cleanser, meaning uh, AHA-3 facial cleanser or AHA-12, if either of those cleansers were used, uh, you would be basically utilizing, uh, and if you haven't researched this, you, you should. I do a video, uh, and I probably should put it at the end of this video, it's called glycolic acid units. So basically each percentage of acid in a product is one unit. So for example, this is AHA-15, and on that specific day, if it was used, that would be 15 units. Let me write it right there. Okay, so if you had AHA-3 as a cleanser, so I'll write AHA-3, that's another three units. Now, is there a lotion or a cream, a, uh, AHA-2 under eye cream, you know, in the evening, right? So AHA-2 under eye cream, that's 15, 18, that's 20 units. That's a lot of glycolic acid. Uh, I would not use AHA-15 three times a week. If you're using AHA-3 facial cleanser, uh, I would probably ask the client to dilute it with a lot of water to reduce the uh, glycolic acid strength and buffer it with the water. The extra water uh, would also raise the pH of the product and it could if if you don't balance it correctly, and you'll know when you put it on, you'll, you'll know when, when the acids work, you'll know when it's buffered, trust me, you, you do. Um, and you should try that on yourself and practice it so you can actually feel that, okay, because you, because you can. And, and, and if you use AHA3 and you're practicing with water, meaning diluting it, uh, and or um, wetting a cotton ball or a cotton round, and, or wetting the face and putting the AHA15 on, uh, that's you should do that for about a week and practice and understand the use of it and feel it and feel the exfoliation and see what happens. Basically, um, understand how many units. Uh, I'll put the video at the end so you understand what glycolic acid units are and always have a less is more approach. With the AHA 15 refining gel, I would go ahead and prescribe that no matter what the Fitzpatrick scale is on the small scale, one, two, or three, okay, uh, once a week. And if it was a Fitzpatrick 1, I pr which is a 1 and 2 on the large scale, I probably wouldn't even prescribe it, and I would prescribe AHA 3. You know what's really interesting? Is even if you take it one step further, AHA 2 um, under eye cream is 2% glycolic acid. Forget the word cream or under eye. This is the important thing. The active ingredient. Well, the pH of the product, obviously, but the active ingredient. So you could basically use this on a Fitzpatrick one, and so it's, I can't handle glycolic acid. I just, oh my God, whatever. Give them AHA2 under eye cream and say, here, put it on your forehead. You know, uh, mix it um, with hydrating lotion a little bit, 50-50, 80-20. You know, 80% this and 20% hydrating lotion. So you can get the coverage. You see what I'm saying? So it's about understanding the Fitzpatrick scale, understanding your client's skin, and using a, uh, product to skin, meaning, okay, and this kind of gets confusing, product to skin versus skin to product, and, and it's interchangeable, but if you understand this, this method, methodology, if, that, if that's the right word, okay, what are you trying to do with your client? The active ingredient is the answer to what you are trying to do. It's the tool that you're using to do it. Now, what is the problem with that approach? The client. You don't know what the skin's gonna do. So you start small and you build up. 
And what does that slow and steady wins the post product client complication? Basically what you're doing is you're basically saying, hey client, we're gonna take it slow. You didn't create those skin problems in a day, so we can't fix them in a day. And if you do, you're gonna go down time. Do you see how that works? The more invasive you are, the faster you want results, the more invasive you must be. So let me draw my lines here. Stratum corneum. This is the epidermis and the dermis. Okay, the fatty layer, right? Okay, so if you have skin conditions, what? Let me pin. If you have skin conditions going on in here, right? Okay. Well, if you use AHA2 under eye cream, it's going to take a long time to get through that, and you may not get to it. It's not strong enough. It just doesn't go deep enough. Okay? So, you're going to step it up to AHA3, maybe. Or if you want to really do something, AHA15. And that's where the original question comes in. Can I use it one, two, three times in the week? Well, do you know your client? Have they been using AHA3 for a while? You see where I'm going with this? The more education. And you might ask, well, you're not really giving me an answer. You're not telling me what to do. If you need to be told what to do, then you want to kit a size, the skincare product, and hand it to your client. It's on the wall, client, kit a size, here's a box, flip the box over, read it. Go do this. You know where that's gonna go? It's going to go in the graveyard underneath the sink. You want to change someone's skin? Do this. Understand the client. Watch my video on how to interview a client, the onion skin method of client skin classification. Do that with every client and let them know that you will solve their skincare problems, but it's going to take time. So back to here, HA15, and I'm, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to draw. I'm going to use a different color. Let's use orange. And I'm going to show you the depth. Now, this isn't actual, okay? But this will give you an idea. HA2 is going to sit right there. Very, very, very little action. It's only 2% glycolic acid, right? HA3 is going to be a little bit different. Okay, it's a cleanser. It's going to be done twice a day, so that's six units a day instead of just the two, you see. So if you went with facial cleanser sensitive skin, uh, you would have no glycolic acid. Then you would have the AHA2 at night, two units a day, very, very little. That's a perfect routine for a Fitzpatrick 1. But AHA15 refining gel, that's a different story. See the difference? Now, if you look at the units used, AHA3 daily. It's a lot of units in a week. It's a lot of units. So the next question uh, that was asked, and, and, it, and it has a lot to do with the use of glycolic acid, is skin lightening products. Okay, skin renewals 10 and skin renewal serum. Okay, so when you're using hydroquinone and or uh, ActiWhite, uh, what you want to do is, and I'll draw a little graph. Okay, so we have uh, month one, month two, month three, and four. Let's just keep it like that. Okay. So if you have someone on a regenerating cycle, and you should watch the video on uh, what is a regenerating cycle, but basically a regenerating cycle is destroy the stratum corneum and the epidermis, let it heal. Destroy, let it heal. Destroy, let it heal. Okay. Over time, year, basically uh, six to nine months, a year, that's how it works. All right. So how, the, what, what basically the theory goes is that when you are going to, and, and personally, I think this is very old school. I really do. I don't, I don't even educate the, to this anymore, but it still is valid. It still is valid. It's just a step that, that I think is a professional's opinion on whether or not they want to go that route. Okay, so let me explain. If you use either skin whitening products, and they're not whitening as it relates to actually whitening the skin, uh, basically what they are is uh, they are... Um, products that uh, retard or stop melanin production based on the skin being harmed. Make sense? Okay. So if you're going to do AHA15 two times for two weeks on month two, 
you would want to prescribe for this period of time the skin renewal or skin renewal 10 to stop and or inhibit the action of the skin in case there's a post peel complication or a post two times a week. Basically, if this client doesn't listen and they do something, go in the sun, whatever, when they're not supposed to, when they're in a regenerating cycle, the other two products will help because they because it's not a light switch with, re, with regards to stopping the melanin um, production when it's been, when the skin's been harmed. The, um, the mechanism by which that happens needs to be slowed down. And that's what those two products do. So you would basically use it for two to four weeks prior, and then you go off of it during the peel, during the month, or during the month you're gonna do this two, two times, uh, two times for two weeks, right? And then you come back on it, and then you stop, okay? And then the cycle repeats, and that's what a regenerating cycle uh, basically is. Okay, so what I a rule of thumb that I like to, to educate and teach on is this. If you have a predetermined date, okay, that you're going to do a chemical peel, two weeks prior to and two weeks post, you would be using uh, either one of those products, okay? Uh, that is the normal regenerating cycle, normal pre-peel and post-peel procedure or protocol. And this basically is your, I'll make that a little bigger, there we go. Okay. That's basically your, uh, your chemical peel day or your two weeks. See how that kind of works? Okay. All right. Um, the other thing that was asked is, and I'm gonna go ahead and put laser, IPL, whatever in all of this, okay. On the, on the day of the procedure, I normally don't recommend any products. So if you do a laser treatment and you want to put skin recovery serum, I would wait till the following day and follow laser protocol. That's just me. I think that any product that is used directly after something as invasive as a laser, no matter what type strength, no matter what you're doing, give the skin 20, 12, 24, 36, 48 hours to just do its thing. Then you can go ahead and add uh, topical products. And I always recommend testing it for irritation. Now, Fitzpatrick scale, so we go Fitz, one, two, three. Now that's the small scale, so remember one is one, two, two is three, four, and three is, is uh, five, six, okay? So when you go this way and that way, okay, always remind yourself of a less is more approach. So you have a question on whether or not a product, a serum, a cream, or a lotion, or a cleanser can be used after any procedure, two or three and fours always stand up better to irritation than one or one and twos or three, five and six, okay? It's just a rule of thumb. And pretty much the skincare industry is based on the fact that the Fitzpatrick scale, uh, three, four or two on the small scale, basically, has no problems. But you always want to take a post peel complication approach, meaning less is more. Leave yourself wiggle room for the client to come back and say, hey, I want more invasive, or hey, I didn't get irritated. You're safe. You want to avoid I'm irritated, or that cell phone call, or that email, or that text that there's a problem. What I find is I find skincare professionals do not follow this rule and they go too strong because they want to make the client happy. But by making the client happy and there's a problem, the client's going to forget that you were trying to make them happy. And that situation can be handled 
by doing a proper client interview with the onion skin method of client skin classification because that truly gets you and the client on the exact same page. And also, you have notes and literature and photographs to remind the client when they say they want more and you're handling things as a professional should with care and a more awareness to potential landmines, things that you don't know the client is going to react to because there's always potential possibility in that. And something to, bear, to, to keep in mind is clients lie. They just do. And clients don't always follow your direction. So by you giving a less is more approach, you're also leaving room for the client to not follow directions, to go out on their own, and to give you kind of an, uh, an alarming story. I've seen clients go to a chemical peel in the morning and in the afternoon. Not even kidding. Because they wanted their skin fresh before they went on vacation to Florida. I, not even kidding. So I hope this answers uh, those questions and also too elaborates on a few things. Leave the comments below or email, reach back out. Be more than happy to elaborate on anything within this video that seems a little bit confusing or that I didn't touch on and dive deeper for you. This is Marty with Skincare Science and we'll see you in the next video.